Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders and showcasing the new Jane Davenport Artemology Collection. There are some wonderful items uh, within this, and what's really cool, we get into a mixed media feel, and we all know how much I love that. So here I have a stamp set and a couple sets of dies that are available. And also she has pastel palettes. Now the one that I will be using today is called Chilled. Um, and there are like four others um, that these are extremely creamy. So I cannot wait um, to use these. So it's in a great um, case that's very strong and secure. And then you have the ability to make your um, palette so that you can see what the colors are. Now you do have to remember these are pastel um, or pastels, okay? This is her version of a pan pastel. Um, these are at a great price point. Um, these are wonderful to use, but just know um, I'm gonna be making a background here. You will need, or I like to use, a fixative to set this. So what I'm going to do first with this background, and again, this I'm actually just playing with them. I'm putting down a very thin layer of white gesso, and I'm using a piece of mixed media cardstock. I am going to dry that with my Ranger heat tool um, so that it won't change the color of my pastel. I don't want to pick up that gesso, so I do want to make sure that's dry. For the applicator, I am simply using uh, makeup applicators that I get from my local dollar store. Um, Jane Davenport's collection does have some wonderful um, applicators for that as well that work very well with the, her pastels. So you can see the difference that I'm getting when it comes to when it's on the gesso, when it's on, when it comes on to the paper, and I'm just mixing these colors. Now remember, they are pastels, so even though you have these dark, bold colors, um, such as the one that I'm using here, it will come off soft. So pastels are like uh, compressed chalk, again, my opinion there. So the reason why I do say that you need a fixative is because even after you're done this, if you wipe your hands along the background, it will come up onto your fingers. If you use these in an art journal, <clears throat> which you'll see that, um, it can get into the page that's before it. So if you do a two-sided in a book type of art journal and you close it, it can transfer from page to page. So I do use a spray adhesive and you'll see the one that I do use. It is by Windsor Newton. And yes, I spray it outside, very much so. So you can see, as I was gabbing there a little bit, I'm just building up this background and I'm just going into all of these colors. I'm putting in a little bit of green and the blues and the pinks and the purples. Um, and I'm just really having a lot of fun with this. Um, these are wonderful to work with. Again, this is how I played. This is how I got started, um, getting used to what these look like. I love the outcome, um, but again, you do want to spray it. This is the fixative that I use, the general purpose matte varnish. Don't be worried about the word varnish. This piece here is sprayed. Um, and I do, I'll do an X, let it dry. I'll turn my page, you know, that was on landscape, then I'll turn it portrait. I'll do another X, let it dry. And it only takes less than a minute to let it dry. And then I'll do a squiggle going down the piece of paper. Um, again, I do do this outside um, because there is an odor to it, um, but it works fantastic. So don't be concerned with the word varnish. Sometimes when, at least when I saw that, I'm like, oh no, this is going to be thick and shiny and it, that's wonderful, but I just don't want that for my um, art journal pages. I do use it for those as well, um, along with these backgrounds that I'm doing here. So back to our 
project that we'll call it. Now, unfortunately, there is some footage that I missed. Um, I forgot to hit record and I do apologize. So here you're I'm making some more backgrounds like I did before. That first one, I'm going to show you that in another project. Again, that was me just playing around, seeing what I can do with them, um, see the different looks I could get, uh, and so forth. And there's so much more. That was just very general. So I'm making two more backgrounds. This one's going to be, of course, in shades of green, and the other one's going to be in, in more shades of a purple. The part that you're that you actually um, didn't see is I'm actually going to make a journal page. I'm going to use my 8x8 uh, ring bound um, journal book that I have um, and I'm going to be building it off of mixed media paper. That's what this one um, is holding right now, but it can be any paper. You can use watercolor paper, you can use mixed media paper, what, whatever you would want to use, that is absolutely fine. So you saw I have the green panel done and now I'm going to go in and create the purple. Now I am leaving all of this work in. I want you to see, um, that's why it is sped up very much, um, but I just wanted you to see that these are absolutely great to work with. I'm not contaminating each of the pot colors because um, I'm only using, I'm using one purple or one applicator for purples. I'm using the one applicators for the pinks and the deep maroon for the blues and also the greens. So um, I'm not contaminating in each of those colors. Um, they're staying very clean. So I do have a piece of paper towel down um, just so that I don't get it all over my uh, cutting mat that I use. Um, but it is, remember, these are just like pressed chalks. Um, they're very vibrant. They have, she has wonderful colors. Um, and the whole, the entire line is just absolutely beautiful. And there's so many other items in this line. I mean, there's, there's paints, um, she, just many things. Um, she's got some liners and again, it's all for the face. Um, please do not use this as eyeshadow. Although it would be tempting, wouldn't it? Cause these colors are awesome. So now that I have my two panels done, I'm going to do my die cutting. So the die that I'm using here is called Mums the Word. And of course, I'm going to cut the leaves on the green and then the mums with the purples and the pinks. Now I'm going to come in with this little blending tool. These are by Ranger and I'm just picking up some of the color to create like a center, just to create some dimension and depth when it comes to this. Now, I'm also going to do that on the green leaves as well, using the very dark green and the dark blue in some cases. Again, just to give it some shading so you can use these chalks that way to give a shading element and to build up uh, what you already have as a base. And you can see that I'm able to build upon these. They don't shift as I'm putting layers on top of layers um, using these colors. No, I'm not using vintage photo, but I am going to use the pastels just to edge, um, just to put a dark edge um, around the outer part of my flowers. These are also small enough to get into those corners and the um, angles that forward in for each of these flowers. Again, it just adds a little bit. It's not too much. I'm actually using a spare sponge because I didn't have a piece of paper near me just to clean off um, the applicator so that I can just keep using it. You can see I'm just building that up a little bit more and it gets darker each time that I do. These dyes are very etched. Um, so beautiful cuts um, with a flawless effort to remove all of those centers. Now imagine if we had um, the different colors and you can, you know, do a lot of paper piecing with these as well, which is always fun. Um, but I wanted these to 
show the background. So that is the part, unfortunately. I was not hitting record. I am so sorry. So again, this is an 8x8 piece of mixed media paper. Now, what I did first was I spritzed it in certain areas with my Distress Oxide of Squeezed Lemonade and Spiced Marmalade. Okay, so that's the background. These pinks and these purples that you're seeing are actually the pastels on top of those oxides. Okay, so again, you can layer with these, which is wonderful. I've also used black cardstock. After I had those pieces laid out on my art journal page, I didn't think they were sticking out far enough. Um, they were popping, but I really wanted them to come off of that page. So black cardstock it is. It is the best thing, um, I think, that makes bright colors become even brighter. I also think that with dark blue as well. Yes, so those two are always my go-to colors to make it pop. So I just wanna create a shadow of each of these images. So for each of the leaves, I'm gonna set all of the black down and then I'm gonna come in with the pastel leaves and just go a little bit off so that I can see just a sliver of that black cardstock. I am using my art glitter glue. I could have used my matte medium, um, but I figured with these, that was one thing I don't want the colors to shift um, and using my matte medium I tend to get very carried away with that and go over the piece and all of that stuff I, I don't don't stay to the back when I use my matte medium um, so that's why I am using my art glitter glue and I did not have any issues of my pieces of cardstock sticking to my art journal page again it's got the pan pastel so it did adhere to it sometimes if people think, oh, well, I've got that thick layer of chalk. Nope, it actually did adhere right to it. Know that when it came to that page, I did not prime that with gesso, only because I did spray it lightly with my oxide. And that's why I've got those cool texture results. If you can see those, you can see that it looks like it's bubbled or or it's textured in some way. Um, that's because with the ink and when the oxide spray dried, you do get that texture. It doesn't dry completely flat. Um, and when I went over with the pastel and I used a makeup applicator, it actually picked up on that and created even more. So that's why I'm not doing too much stamping or I didn't do any stamping in the background. And of course I changed my mind on that, but that's okay. We can make it work and we do. So we let it go and we keep going, like I always say. So I'm just finishing up finally on the leaves. Sorry for that little gab fest there. Um, and I do have some areas that are hanging off of the page. I'm going to use uh, my scissors. These scissors are by Fun Stampers Journey. These are the Grand Shears. I cannot recommend them enough if you're looking for some nice, sturdy scissors. But please be careful. <laughs> my finger is still wrapped <laughs> from what I did. So they are extremely sharp. Very, very sharp. And they are not serrated. Um, but they are a nice, solid um, scissor. I will keep continue to keep using them. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, very sharp. So I just wanted to add a little bit more from the uh, pastels and you can see how I just drug that through. I am using the um, floating feathers here from that stamp set. I'm doing a second generation. Again, I couldn't find a piece of paper, so I'm using my paper towel. Use what's in your stash. <laughs> this is the epitome of it um, and have fun. So I'm just stamping some of the smaller um, feathers within that section between the mums. I'm going to use some of the white gesso. I'm going to water that down, pick that up with a paintbrush, 
and just go to town. Um, I'm going to cover the mums themselves. I'm actually okay if the leaves get some white specks, um, but I didn't want all of the entire mum to have all of those white speckles. And then you can see I just changed my mind and I just wanted a few to go on there as well. Now remember, this is not protected yet. Um, so those white specks are not going to be pure white specks. Um, they are going to adapt to the color that they are sitting on, whether that's the pink, whether that's the orange or the yellow. I'm going to use the extremely, the darkest of the blues when it comes to the pastels. And I'm going to use that for my edge. Instead of pulling in my Distress Oxide like I normally do, I wanted to see how the Pan Pastels would do with this. And they did very well. Um, yes, you do have to go over it a little bit more, but it's a nice, subtle um, hue of color. It's not um, strong. So if you just want something that's soft and in the background, these are definitely your go-to. Now I added one of my chipboard pieces that says creativity takes courage. It takes courage. It takes it to be enjoyed. So please make sure you enjoy. Have fun with what you have. So again, I used dyes. Yes, I used a, a pastel palette. I used my Distress Oxides and we created a beautiful art journal page. So we may be card makers, but we can still use those items in our art journals. So this is again where I forgot to hit record, so sorry. So I used that panel that we made before from the beginning when I was playing. I absolutely loved it. I used all of the stamps from Floating Feathers and all I did was use silver embossing powder to accent those feathers. I used the clear stamp sentiment set by Spellbinders and just say happy memories. So you can make cards using these. Again, using a fixative, if you're gonna have a card or even an art journal, you do wanna use a fixative. It doesn't have to be the one that I use. I am just a fan of that. I get it through Amazon and it has lasted me forever. Um, that one can, I think I've had for the past three or four years and I don't even think I've put a dent in it. So. Um, I think it's it's very well worth it. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I want to thank you so much for stopping by and watching today's video. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell because you certainly don't want to miss the next video. I hope everyone's having a great day. Remember, always take care, but remember what's most important. Always be creative.